Transportation safety sounds like a subject that someone in our tribal community should be dealing with. Well, each of you watching this program could be that someone. As a matter of fact, the safety of our children, our families, and our people is something that concerns us all and something that every tribal resident should be involved in. Hello, I'm Harlan Mikasato and thanks for joining me. The problem this program discusses is our shared problem and the people affected by this problem are our people. If you're an elected tribal official or other community decision maker, it's particularly important that you understand the emergency that faces us, making our reservation roads safer for motorists and pedestrians alike. I invite you to watch this program with an open heart and mind so that together we can begin to take action to save our children and preserve the future of tribal communities. This scene is all too real and all too familiar in Indian country. Another native young person has been taken before his life has really begun. Our Indian people, particularly the young ones, are being killed and permanently injured at an alarming rate. The weapon of choice? The automobile. The impact that this has on tribal communities, we're losing our young people. You're looking at an age group of 35 and younger where the average fatalities occur. This is our future. And when we start losing our future, that equals to no future. My name is Jewel James. I'm from the Lummi Indian Reservation. I'm sitting on a piece of an old growth uh, western red cedar log that was taken out of the national forest. Uh, Lummi artists come here to uh, uh, get wood so they can make masks or paddles, rattles. Uh, right now we're doing a couple of totem poles that are gifts to the Lummi community. We carve totem poles to help the families heal. This wolf pole is a gift to the Lummi children. Uh, for myself, it's uh, a way of remembering my son and daughter that I lost. They, they died on the side of the road, they hit by cars. A few years ago, when I, my son was alive, uh, he was grieving over the loss of his sister. She died on the uh, Haxton Way. She got ran over. Her and her uh, two cousins were walking along. They all got struck by a teenage driver. And so uh, they thought, and it was broad daylight. Uh, the impact killed her. She was 19 at the time, and he always cried for her. And on her birthday, he wanted to uh, do something. So he and I carved a couple uh, frogs, and we put them up at the entrance to the community building on her birthday. And we said, uh, we'll replace them with totem poles later. And then uh, a couple years later, I lost him the same way. He was walking along the road and got struck and killed. It's been tough, of course, but I haven't forgotten our promise, you know, so we're carving that uh, wolf pole. There'll be a prayer ceremony on May 11th at sunrise. Uh, a lot of it's because the roads are unsafe and the kids are killing themselves either driving or being out at the wrong time in dangerous places. This is not one isolated event that took place on one unfortunate reservation. This is a universal event that is taking place daily on every reservation. Jewel James' tragic story could easily be your story. Our people are dying on reservation roads at two to three times the national average. Our elders ask, why is this happening? And why isn't something being done about it? They turn to tribal leaders for answers. Some tribal leaders say, that's just the way it is in Indian country. It can't be changed. Others say the problem is a lack of money. There aren't enough funds to do any good. The truth is, when it comes to the safety of our people, each of us has a decision to make and a part to play. 
you know the old saying, you're either part of the solution or part of the problem. The cost of doing nothing uh, to manage safety problems is your cousin, your father, your child, um, a family. The cost of doing nothing is unacceptable. If you want to be part of the solution, then you can start where you are right now. Do the best you can with the resources and manpower you have at hand, and learn how to do more as soon as possible. Here are some ideas to get you started. We all want to make our communities safe places to live, work, and play. The problem on your reservation may seem too large and overwhelming. Where do you begin? You begin by breaking down the big problem into smaller pieces and examining what exactly are the causes of accidents, injuries, and deaths on your reservation and where are they taking place. Doing this homework step first will later open doors to funding that's available to carry out transportation safety projects. Probably the, the, the most important thing that a uh, tribal uh, government community could do is to organize observation teams to go out and actually record what the transportation system looks like. Go out and do an inventory. It can be as simple as getting a notepad and a pencil and driving the road and recording what signs are up. The next, look at your delineators, that is your reflectors off to the shoulders, the reflectors on the road, and your striping. Is it present? If it is, what condition is it in? And the other is lighting. Are there street lights? Where are they located? Where should they be located? Just as we've broken down the problem into manageable portions, we must now divide the possible solutions into similar manageable segments. To better understand the pathways to safety, let's examine what's called the four E's of safety. Education, engineering, enforcement, and emergency medical services. There's, there's very simple things that, that we can do. One is continually have safety in your speech. Remind people to buckle up. Remind people that you care about them, that you'd like to see them come home safely. Tribal leadership could exert a great amount of influence through the education program, getting into the schools, talking to the kids, um, talking about alcohol-related uh, situations and causing fatalities on the roadways and so on like that. Education to the community, educating the community on how to, how to be safe on the roadways and, and when they're walking on the roadways or even driving on the roadways. You know, education is, is really crucial. And the more you educate, um, the more the community uh, I think it takes a lot of education to the community to buy in. You, you need community buy-in on these things. It's a challenge all the time. I'll frequently repeat to someone the same thing over and over and over again before they remember. And unfortunately, with, with the way people are and human nature is, is, is it'll take an incident usually to, to really teach that lesson to, to be safe in what they're doing. We do have tribal newspapers that could step up and start promoting safety within their uh, articles, within their um, newspapers. Uh, that, that would help tremendously. In, in the safety management community, there really isn't any accident. There are crashes. Uh, because there is something at fault. Either there is a, a, a law that wasn't enforced and that has been broken, or uh, the engineering is faulty. There, there may be a curve that is slanted the wrong way, and when you take it on ice, you slide off, and there's no guardrail. And so then all of a sudden you're off, uh, off the road entirely and rolling down the hill. The most rewarding part of my job in the past 12 years was when I heard my staff tell people that we had fixed the road that had caused 
every other year an accident, a, a personal injury accident, a fatality or a, a personal injury. Somebody got their arm, got some blood on the road. And they say that we fixed it, repaired it, and over the past six years, no one has been hurt. That, to me, was rewarding when they said, we did a good job, we did it right, we brought it to the current code standards, we made it the way it should be, and now people are living longer and better lives because of that. Definitely. Tribes would have the opportunity to, uh, to address some of the issues associated with, with uh, traffic deaths and fatalities on, on reservation highways by contracting those functions and taking advantage of uh, the ability to redesign programs to maybe fit more of the local situation and circumstances of the road system on the reservations. We take traffic enforcement very seriously um, because we realize how important it is to the public safety. Uh, everything from children walking along the road, riding their bicycles along the road, speeders going through the reservation, it creates for a very, very dangerous situation. Uh, we want to create an environment that's safe not only for them but for their family members and all who enter the reservation. Traffic enforcement is how we accomplish this. Our traffic enforcement statistics are coming down in all areas, um, speeding especially. We want to deter. We don't, we don't go out with the uh, mindset of trying to make statistics. We want to deter people from, making, from committing the offense in the first place. The tribal councils, they're the ones who promulgate the traffic laws. And tribal courts, uh, we, we come on after the police give them the tickets and tell them to come to court. When they come to court, then we have to enforce uh, the laws. And when it comes to that, we're talking about the safety of the residents as well. Uh, the remedies can be very simple. When they come to court, you can uh, put sanctions on them. The easiest one is, is fines, you know, to do traffic fines. And, and, and if they're good citizens, that's a good deterrence. Um, but if there's more, more needed, you can do other things like community service, or you could tell them that uh, you're going to send uh, to the state uh, the records of that, that, that they broke the law, or you can send them to traffic school. There are several things that you can do, but those, those are some of the remedies that I have done in tribal court. Uh, if it's complex, like for a DUI, so you can tell them, you know, I think you need to go to treatment, and if you go to treatment, uh, um, the fine can be lessened, or we put you, put you on probation and we have to take care of you. And uh, you can do that, and uh, it's, you have to think about the safety of the people, and that's why traffic, enforcing traffic is very important on reservations. <laughs> Emergency services are important because emergency services is about saving lives. The EMS is the final safety net um, primarily because in this day and world um, there's no one else to respond other than the EMS system, other than an EMS technician, other than a paramedic, other than somebody who's medically trained to respond. The components of the emergency medical system involve um, a team of personnel beginning with the medical director here in Yakima County, um, paramedics who are certified, um, EMTs um, who are certified, um, and the fire department who have certified paramedics and EMT on staff. In, ad in addition to the um, emergency medical um, responders that we have in Yakima County, you have the fire dispatchers and the 911 dispatchers who are also involved. And I have to say that it's been very beneficial to the Indian people to have White Swan Ambulance here and available. There isn't one cookie cutter template for creating safe communities. There are multiple approaches to safety and elements from several of these approaches may be best for your community. An SMS is a safety management system. And a safety management system, in very simplest terms, is that management system that you are going to use as a manager of safety to address the safety concerns. So the first thing you need to know, what are those concerns? And the way that you address that is through data. This is why data is so important. 
According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, there are six types of records that are involved in a safety management system. One involves the driver licensing, one involves vehicle licensing, the third one is emergency medical services, the fourth one is road inventory, the fifth one law enforcement accident reports and court citations. I'm hoping that in the tribal safety management system that the Bureau of Indian Affairs Division of Transportation is working on, that they will indeed think of a program that is flexi flexible enough for all tribal governments. Tribes across the country are in varying stages of developing tribal safety programs. Some, such as the Lummi Reservation where Jewel James lives, are beginning to take the first baby steps with a new program they call Be Seen. There was a discussion about all the uh, motor vehicle accidents and the injuries and the, and the fatalities that occur on the reservations to our pedestrians and, and of course we're particularly worried about the, the children and the kids that, that walk on the roads. We thought we could start trying to, to do something to improve uh, their safety when they're walking if they have to walk. Things like education and, and outreach and, and teaching them and making them aware of what's going on. Posters. We're going to work on um, uh, assemblies and, and other programs really to try to get the kids to, to get them to understand um, the importance of being safe and taking care of themselves around the, when they're when they're walking on the road and we came across this idea of, of creating a jacket with a school logo um, the, the symbol of the school and uh, in the school colors black and, and maroon paint that onto the jackets in, in the reflective ink or, or heat transfer thing that uh, and the kids said that that's something that they would wear. Seat belts. Safety belts. The seat belts. The seat belts. Many of the injuries and deaths in Indian country could be prevented by just wearing seat belts. From 1975 to 2002, there was an increase of 57.5% of fatalities compared to an only of a 2.2 in the nation. Something right there tells you that this is a big problem. And a very simple way to address that is just to wear seatbelts. Finding what will work on your reservation will take time, energy, and community involvement. One thing's for sure, if you do nothing, nothing will change. And so as a councilman who's getting older and older, this is my 10th year, that's the problem I think more about all the time is what, what kind of world do we want to leave to our future generations, you know? Because I really believe that whatever vision that we come up with, that's going to come to be, you know? I really believe strongly in that, and uh, I've seen it happen myself many, many times. And, and so I think as we, as we get more um, more sophisticated and we learn how to do things better in this modern world, it becomes more and more important for us to stay connected with our traditions, you know. We need, our tradi traditions need to guide our future, and so that's, to me that's the key is connecting the traditions with the future, you know. For our children's sake, don't accept the status quo on your reservation. You can take a stand. You can make a difference. Make safety a priority of your tribal administration, a philosophical part of your leadership. Like warriors of old, take a vow to protect your people in the face of seemingly impossible odds. Each of our dearly loved tribal traditions began somewhere with someone. Now it's your turn. Together, let's make transportation safety a new tribal tradition.